So I came across this article from Screen Rant. I do enjoy some material from the entertainment website. This article in particular made me stop to contemplate my thoughts on potential Game of Thrones sequels, and I decided to read further. But our author of this article suggests that there are three characters that would be better suited for a sequel series rather than Jon Snow. And I must preface this video with I disagree with the reasoning behind these characters replacing Jon Snow, but I do want to look at each character that they suggest and discuss why they could work and then why they may not work. Honestly, I feel like this list was lazy and this is what a casual fan may come up with while they're trying to hit a quota for their publication because I think it's an interesting topic and the characters suggested are worth discussing, but again, this just wasn't a very compelling or not a lot of thought was put into this piece, I don't believe. I'll place a link in the description box if you want to check it out for yourself. As far as the three characters suggested, we have Tyrion, Arya, and interestingly, we have Grey Worm. But before we get into this list, if you enjoy this video or find it entertaining, please leave it a like, and if you're new here, consider subscribing so you can keep up with all things A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, including the upcoming House of the Dragon TV series on HBO. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Tyrion. I think the most obvious area of a show focused around the Hand of the King is we'll see the new Westeros under the leadership of King Bran the Broken. Now the best part of this is that this should provide audiences with a bit more insight into what exactly Bran has become. Things are hinted at in Game of Thrones, but never fully disclosed to the audience. And it didn't appear that our other characters ever truly discovered the depth of Bran's power either. Also, the ending of Game of Thrones gave us only one single episode for Tyrion to grapple with the death of Jaime and Cersei. So where that leaves him emotionally could help extend or even enhance his arc from Game of Thrones. Because as it went in the show, after season four, he really just became a bit foolish with his decision making. Where his arc felt closer to complete in season 4 finale, the next four seasons kind of stripped him of his arc but didn't really replace it, ultimately making Tyrion far less compelling. As I go through this, why don't I think this makes sense to build a sequel around, as far as a character? We've seen Tyrion as hand before been there, done that. We watched him kick ass at it in moments. We watched him fail miserably at it. What is something new that could be introduced to this character that we haven't seen? In the books, Tyrion has a much different trajectory, and if the show followed a more villainous Tyrion, there may be more meat left on the bone to pull story from. But so much of Tyrion's story is his family, and they're all dead. Where the show struggled after season 4 compared to the books is character motive. They abandoned this a lot in Game of Thrones. Don't think about what your motives would be if you were him. What were his true motives and as an audience did that feel as significant or compelling as his arc in the first four seasons? I don't think so. Tyrion could work in a significant supporting role, but as far as being the centerpiece, this character fell apart in the later seasons for audiences and there's just not anything left to make him emotionally compelling that we didn't already see in Game of Thrones. And that'll bring us to Arya Stark. Arya leaves us in Game of Thrones making way to her voyage to whatever is west of Westeros. Now there's no denying that pursuing discovery can have many intriguing ideas. The mystery surrounding all other voyages have ended with those who sailed west to never be seen again. However, in the book Fire and Blood, the answer to this question may have been offered when we learn on one of Corlys Velaryon's voyages that he believes he saw Sun Chaser docked in a shy. Now Sun Chaser belonged to Alyssa Farman, aka Alyssa Westhill, who was last seen sailing west from the three islands she discovered and named Aegon, Rhaenys, and Visenya. So the primary question asked by an Arya show may have already been answered, with that answer being that this world is round just like our planet. But I think the most exciting revival of this character would be to look back east at Bravos and elaborate on the Faceless Men. Jack and Hagar still lived when we last saw him, and if you're like me, I feel like that time Arya spent in Bravos, training with the Faceless Men felt a bit clunky and maybe even inconsistent with our knowledge of the Faceless Men. Now the biggest problem with Arya is a problem that many of the surviving characters would face in a sequel. That problem being that regardless of execution, the individual characters' stories are wrapped up in Game of Thrones, completing any outstanding character arcs. The most interesting aspect of where the Arya character left off in the original series is her intention to sail west, but I also feel that storyline never seems suited for Arya 
as much so as the discovery of her identity. What Game of Thrones really insisted upon for Arya was that inward conflict between not only being a noble lady, but a desire to fall out of the conformity of her femininity and go against what is expected of her as a girl from a great house while not truly fulfilling her purpose. Arya from the very beginning admired the great Targaryen queens from Aegon's conquest and pursued this admiration as she trained with Serio, the Hound, and ultimately with the Faceless Men. It was there with the Faceless Men she was confronted with how far apart from what is expected of her as Arya Stark to her own independent identity. It's deliberate that she's forced into the very extreme and absolutism of becoming what they called no one because that's as far away from the expectation of being a lady in Westeros could become. I believe her individual character arc and plot is as complete as it could be when she ultimately wears the name Arya Stark proudly, but refuses to become just another noble lady of a great house. Also I might add, if you believe the world to be round and she may find herself in a shy, I think that would be better tailored to a character much more attached to the magic of the East. So looking at a Targaryen, which we only have Jon Snow of course, I leave the door open as well to a Daenerys resurrection or something involving the Red Priest. And finally, that brings us to Grey Worm. Now the Grey Worm idea is a lot more interesting than you may think at first, but what would make it work is also what I believe would hurt it a lot. It appears the primary motive for the author that wrote this article with Screen Rant put a lot of emphasis on diversity. And I'm for everyone to feel represented by the media they consume, but regardless of anyone's background, you don't just want to feel represented, but audiences of all kind want to feel emotionally connected by emotionally relatable characters. So this is a bit of a tricky thing to introduce a Grey Worm sequel. I think attaching sequel to this is a huge mistake. To best serve Grey Worm and the Unsullied, you should want them as disconnected from Game of Thrones as possible if you want audiences to be emotionally invested. A spinoff that seldom mentions Westeros I think would serve the Unsullied best, but again, what story are we coming up with that would actually be engaging? Because if Grey Worm and the Unsullied truly make it to Noth, book readers know that's a dangerous place to go for non-indigenous people of that island as Butterfly Fever makes this a very exclusive island. The biggest issue facing Grey Worm is that there's no inherent conflict built into his story that doesn't involve Westeros any longer. The slavers were killed, so an uprising in Astapor or Marine may be an option to explore. Now the author of the Screen Rant article suggests Grey Worm for the diversity aspect, but what I think is missing is compelling story that would resonate with viewers. What would be interesting about the Unsullied as a whole wouldn't be a sequel at all, but rather another prequel scenario. This would be of course involving the Dothraki as well as the Battle of Kohar where an outnumbered Unsullied defeated the Dothraki. This would introduce a much wider audience to what would be perceived as a much more diverse setting in Essos as well as introducing audiences to what many find to be very compelling lore based material. Now to conclude this video, I don't think either three of these characters make for a better sequel than Jon Snow, but I also feel that a sequel isn't the best direction to go with anyway. I believe prequels will serve fans much better as they can help to contextualize and enhance so much of the stories we heard about in Game of Thrones. I believe a sequel series, primarily its objective is to enhance the original material and provide closure to unfinished stories. While I think Game of Thrones ending really makes this challenging, of the characters left alive, Jon Snow and his heritage felt like it should have impacted Westeros as a whole much more. Additionally, Westeros under the rule of Bran, that could definitely stir up some interest as well. Who knows, the three characters suggested by this article could be organically brought back into substantial supporting roles in a Jon Snow sequel, especially with Grey Worm as I believe that the character was left without any justice for his losses of Masande and Daenerys. Ultimately, I prefer prequel over sequel and I firmly believe that House of the Dragon will display why the George R. R. Martin universe should continue in that direction.